fees, uh, the, the resolution, as you know, is Bitcoin or a similar form of cryptocurrency will eventually replace government's fiat money as the preferred medium of exchange. Uh, Eric Voorhees, please take the podium and defend that resolution. Thank you. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Eric Voorhees. I'm the founder and CEO of Shapeshift, which is a leading digital asset exchange. It's available nearly everywhere in the world other than here in New York, because New York is quietly suffocating under a depressing pall of statism. <laughs> the question of who's more socialist, New York or China, would perhaps be a good topic for a Soho debate. <laughs> I'd like to thank Gene Epstein in the forum for hosting the debate. I would also like to thank Peter for agreeing to spar with me here this evening. Peter is someone that I've looked up to for a very long time. Back in 2008, prior to Bitcoin, I listened to Peter's podcasts every day uh, while driving to work. Much of what I've learned about money and economics came from him. So Peter, thank you for all that you have taught me over the years. <laughs> and thank you especially for agreeing to take the position of defending fiat currency tonight, for Lord knows that I never would. <laughs> Tonight, I make the case that Bitcoin or a similar form of cryptocurrency will eventually replace government fiat as a preferred means of exchange. I'll use the term Bitcoin loosely here to refer to any such cryptocurrency that accomplishes that goal. I'm going to construct the argument in four pieces. First, why Bitcoin is good money. Second, why fiat is bad money. Third, why gold or other forms of market-based money are insufficient. Fourth, why Bitcoin will win. So first, why is Bitcoin good money? As we all know, mankind has used many different things as money. Monies come and go, and the adoption of one monetary standard over another is the rule rather than the exception throughout history. But a society's choice of money is not arbitrary. There are certain attributes of money which seem preferable to others. Gold scores highly on these attributes, which is why it has remained an indelible monetary standard for millennia. To assess Bitcoin's likelihood of assuming the monetary throne for the next period of human history, one must first understand its attributes. First, I'll point out that Bitcoin possesses all the attributes not only of good money, but of supremely good money. It is not marginally better than alternatives, rather it is in its own league entirely. First, Bitcoin is provably scarce. There are only 21 million of them, and there can never be more. I can tell you exactly how many there will be tomorrow. The answer is 17,130,620. I can tell you the supply a year from now and 10 years from now. Let's see any central bank attempt such a feat. And yet while scarce, Bitcoin is easily divisible. One Bitcoin can be cut into 100 million pieces and recombined at will. In terms of divisibility, Bitcoin wins hands down over both fiat and gold. Bitcoin is also durable. A Bitcoin exists as a ledger entry, backed up on thousands of computers around the world. Certainly if the internet went down, you'd be unable to use Bitcoin, but that is also true of your credit cards, PayPal, banks, and any other form of modern money. So Bitcoin is at no disadvantage to fiat in this regard. Bitcoin is fungible. Each Bitcoin is worth the same as every other. It is recognizable. Every Bitcoin wallet can quickly attest whether a Bitcoin is legitimate or not. A Bitcoin cannot be counterfeited. Unlike with gold, it cannot be filled with tungsten. And as one of its greatest attributes, Bitcoin is highly portable. You can send it anywhere on Earth for very little cost. It moves across borders with ease. It has no concept of borders. It has no weight, it has no smell, it has no physical body that can be blocked or apprehended. Indeed, it is the only form of money today which can be moved at distance without trusting a third party. It is the only money that doesn't require permission from an overseer. Therefore, it is the only money appropriate for free people. Finally, Bitcoin also possesses an important attribute which will one day be seen as critical for good money, programmability. Bitcoin can be programmed to enable all kinds of economic activity often without a middleman, escrow agent, or human arbitration of any kind. This programmability without having to trust anyone is impossible with fiat, and in a digital age will come to be one of its most important advantages. Next, let's discuss why fiat is bad money. <laughs> why should we care about cryptocurrencies and their attributes when we already have fiat? Fiat works pretty well, right? It's got pyramids and government buildings printed on it, so you know it's valuable. <laughs> also, it is backed by paper. Paper can be burned if you're cold in the winter. There's its intrinsic value. Try that with gold. <laughs> but a skeptical observer should know that fiat money is an absolute scam and something altogether inappropriate for an ethical market-based society. 
As I like to say, you cannot have a free market when the most important good, money itself, is centrally planned and controlled. Fiat money and a market economy are mutually exclusive concepts. Like oil and water, they can certainly be mixed up together when force is applied, but they will naturally separate and dispel one another over time. Indeed, the average lifespan of fiat is less than 50 years. The US dollar only became fiat in 1971. That's less than the length of William Shatner's career. <laughs> and as it happened, last week he announced that he has started to mine bitcoins as well. <laughs> Regardless, when examining its specific properties as money, most ways fiat is unimpressive. First, it is not scarce. It is systematically created out of thin air with no limit on supply, nor can supply even be known. Fiat is willed into existence by politicians and banks because printing money enriches the printer at the expense of the public who holds the previously printed money. The phenomenon is known as inflation, inflation or currency debasement. Fiat also struggles with durability. Your fiat will only last so long as your bank permits, and even then it slowly loses its value. Your bank can destroy your fiat with the click of a button. Ask a Cypriot. Ask an Argentinian how durable fiat is. With fiat, you are ever dependent on a third party with your wealth. Is that an attribute of money that you find attractive? Some people are comfortable with it because they trust their government, but requiring trust in politicians seems a poor foundation upon which to build a prosperous society. Finally, fiat is not nearly as portable as Bitcoin. Try to send an international wire right now. You can't because it's after five o'clock. How quaint <laughs> is that? You can try tomorrow morning, as long as it's not Sunday, because apparently God doesn't want you to use the financial system on the Sabbath. <laughs> but even when successful, you'll discover it takes three to five days for your wire to arrive. You often have to physically go to the bank to do this. You have to fill out a form on paper while someone making $15 an hour takes that info and types it back into a computer. Why do people put up with this nonsense? Indeed, it is faster to strash, strap cash to an anvil and FedEx it to Tokyo than it is to send an international wire. Do you really think that that system is going to outcompete Bitcoin in an open marketplace? And you can only send fiat if you have permission. Try to send it to a family member in Russia. You'll be censored. Want to donate to a relief effort, perhaps, in Venezuela? Too bad, you'll be censored. Are you sending a suspicious amount? Your payment will be blocked, and you better get ready for questioning or outright confiscation. Yep, the Orwellian nanny state is alive and well, and fiat currency is one of its most insidious tentacles. Fiat has these poor monetary attributes because it is a tool and appendage of the state. It exists to serve the state, not to exist market participants. Its attributes as money are intentionally constrained and inferior so as to siphon wealth to the state through debasement and to surveil and control the behavior of the king's subjects. Remember that fiat means value by decree, not by merit. So why are gold and other alternatives insufficient? I love gold. I own gold and I would like to own more gold. I understand why gold is good money, and Peter has done a great job of teaching such concepts to the public. But gold as a, as a physical heavy commodity cannot be efficiently used as money at scale. Imagine trying to run payroll with physical gold coins. Try to make change for a pizza with bullion, and forget about payment at strip clubs. Bruising women is not cool. Unless you're the New York Attorney General Snyderman. Suffice to say that gold, when in physical form, is impractical for commerce. <laughs> for gold to work in a modern economy, it must be warehoused by a company, and then digital certificates or credits must be issued against that gold. Those digital certificates could theoretically work well as money in a modern economy, except for one problem, centralization. A digital gold payment service or any privately issued market-based money requires some form of centralized control or custody and thus exposes users to counterparty risk. This is fatal because if such a private company ever grows to scale, a government could shut it down, unplug its servers, arrest its principles, and seize its assets. This exact thing happened with eGold and another company, Gold Money, was so scared of this happening that they stopped allowing payments of digital gold between customers entirely. Private money when centralized, probably cannot attain scale and thus cannot surpass fiat because the government won't allow it. So why will Bitcoin win? Bitcoin will win because there is now competition in money, and Bitcoin is the best money currently available. Because it's decentralized, it cannot be stopped. It doesn't happen all at once. Nobody switches immediately from fiat and banks to Bitcoin and blockchains. Rather, Bitcoin will simply, gradually, come to be used as an occasional alternative to fiat. 
Individuals will find specific times and places in which it is easier, faster, safer, or cheaper to use Bitcoin to store or transfer wealth than to use credit cards or banks. Indeed, two billion people in the world don't even have credit cards or banks. For them, the choice will be easy. Yet despite the failings of the legacy system, Bitcoin now imbues every human on earth with financial sovereignty. With Bitcoin, anyone of any age, race, or creed, no matter which imaginary lines they were born within, and nothing more than a $50 smartphone, can send and receive money anywhere in the world instantly at near zero cost, and there isn't a goddamn thing that anyone else in the world can do to stop that. It is one of the most potent tools of individual empowerment ever invented, and it is happening right in front of us. Fiat now persists solely on the momentum of, the momentum of tradition. The older generations may cling to it for quite some time, but they and their ways are dying, and their wealth decays in front of them, debased openly by the very people they worship, salute, and vote into office. Someday, school children will laugh and joke with each other as they learn about the silly flag paper with cultish incantations inscribed on it, <laughs> which, in yet another of history's examples of mass delusion, people thought to be valuable. Or maybe they won't laugh and joke because they will have learned how much destruction it actually caused. Maybe fiat will be looked at more like medieval bloodletting, a dark symptom of human ignorance that is so obviously foolish in hindsight. Fiat will fall in time, and in its place, true decentralized market-based money will emerge. The profit motive alone will lead capital gradually away from those assets which can be debased and censored to those which cannot. To future generations, it will appear as inevitable as the collapse of serfdom, and for the very same reason. This is why Bitcoin or some other cryptocurrency will eventually replace government fiat. <laughs>